Welcome, everybody. Thank you, thank you, thank you for coming to spend a little time with me here. Uh, I know it's going to do me some good, so I trust it will do you some good as well. That's actually the secret, right? We do all this stuff for ourselves, and we invite other people to come with us and hope that it works out well. So I'm going to tell you, start by telling you something, you know, I, we, some of us, and some of us who are on this call actually, just finished two weekends of very, very intense, very beautiful healing works here at our, at the house of White Eagle, where I live, where Jane and I live. And uh, let me tell you what I learned besides the 2000 things that I learned is uh, once again, the basis of healing, of all healing, is the space of the heart. And within the refinement of the space of the heart, the space of compassion and faith are actually what creates the atmosphere and the possibility of healing. And um, as I said over these weekends, I hope that there are many places on earth where the healing that happens is as profound and beautiful and multi-layered as where we are. I hope that's true. That would be a really good thing. Okay. So I learned that again. So really, what are we doing here? We're invoking light because light is our methodology and our technology and our nourishment and our way of being on earth and the way of helping. And to do that, also, we are learning in this strange virtual space to hold that same place of the heart like you're doing right now. So I'm going to ask you to be conscious of it. Let's take a moment, all of us, right? Most of you have done at least something with us. There are people on here who have studied with us for a long time. And I see people that I've known for 20 years. So I'm very grateful to have the chance to see you again. So let me lead you quickly through what, how we do this, okay? I do this every day, every morning, many times a day. I do this at any time that I am entering into a particular, any, any space. If I go to our local co-op or I'm going to have a conversation. And I am using this in these days really, really intensely because personally, I'm going through a very intense moment of healing in my own life. Right? Some of you know this. So I have found that this very simple inner technology, inner yoga alignment is really, really profound. It allows me, I'm going to talk a little bit about this in a moment, but this allows me to um, navigate through the waters that I'm sailing in, which are have been quite turbulent in these last couple of months, but have a, a place to sit, have a, right? My boat has a keel. And when I have my hand on the rudder and somebody has their hand on top of mine, it's because I can be in my heart, grounded in my heart, centered, grounded on earth, centered my heart, receiving light. So I just want you to, this is my gift to you, right? When we get together once a month so that you can then in your way, if you choose, as you choose, make use of this really simple thing that anybody can do. Anybody can do this, right? It enhances in my estimation, and I know there's people on this call that can testify to this, Right? It enhances anything I do. It underlies anything I do. And it doesn't negate anything. Right? If you have a spiritual path like I do, 
if you have a, a religious orientation, if you don't at all, you wouldn't be on this call if you didn't have a spiritual orientation. But whatever it is, to have an underpinning from which then to do what needs to be done in service of your healing or your work or whatever you need to do, for me is a huge gift. And I can honestly say that it has come from a collaboration. Collaboration of many people on this call. Collaboration of me with the guides who have come through me to give this information. Right? The collaboration then with all the people who have come and worked with us and who have tested it out and proven that it is useful. So let's do it. I'm going to ask you to close your eyes. And the, it all has to do with feeling and sensation. So really, the secret is we are entering more deeply into our bodies, into our vehicles, into contact with ourselves, that aspect of us. So close your eyes and how, it, how whatever whatever is nearest to the ground of you, if you're sitting on the Zafu or you're sitting on a chair, if your feet are closest to the ground, feel your feet. If your butt is on the ground, feel your sits bones, your knees, and just pay attention to that. And breathe into that contact. Put your enter your awareness in your feet, put your awareness in your butt, put your awareness and breathe deeply. Opening the contact between you and the earth. It doesn't matter where you are. If you're in a high-rise apartment building, the earth is still there. Like that. Now put one hand on your lower belly and one hand under your collarbone, right in the center. And breathe between your hands. Breathe up from the earth, right in front of your spine. This requires some visualization until you can actually feel it, but it doesn't matter. Breathe up, up, up to the top hand. Hold it for a count of three. And then breathe down, 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 down to the bottom and hold it for a count of three and do that four times. Now put both your hands very gently crossed over your heart chakra, right in the center of your chest, gently. And your bottom hand, bend your fingers a little so you're touching your fingertips to that area around the center of your heart. And just give a little pressure. You can do a little pressure, a little scratch, a little. Call your attention to that place, that space. Breathe into it. You are activating the etheric body of your heart chakra. The dominant quality of that space is calm. Good job. Now make a shelf out in front of your heart chakra. Your, your hand sticking out straight, a shelf. And however you do this, sit on the edge of your fingers. See it, feel it, imagine it. I imagine that there's a dock that I walk out on and I sit and dangle my feet in the pristine lake.
Pay attention to what happens in your experience when you do that. How do you feel when you do this? What shifts? Good job. Now, where the heel of your hand, put the heel of your hands where your fingers are. You've just gone 50%. Go the next 50%. The heel of your hands where your fingers were and stick your fingers straight out. Put your awareness there where your fingers are. This is the mental body of the heart chakra. It is the place where faith, faith lives in every human heart. Faith not having anything to do necessarily with religion. Most religions substitute blind belief for actual faith. Belief also lives in the mental body. But it's a different filter than faith. Okay, now, put your hands down and just breathe in your heart space. Now, look at me for a minute. Put your hands like this and put it behind your head. I'm going to show you. Do more like this. You have a tube, a chimney that goes from between your shoulder blades right up the back of your head to the top of your aura. This is your light reception tube and your transformation release tube. Brush your hands along the back of your head slowly. Seeing, feeling, sensing, imagining that chimney opening vertically. Mm. Like that. Good job. Do it once more on your own. Pay attention to how your awareness shifts, how the energy in you, around you shifts. You are opening yourself to light right now. Right now. Go back to the beginning, grounded on earth, centered in your heart, feeling the space of compassion and faith and opening to light. Now, pay attention to your heart and open your heart to all the rest of the people, the dear ones on this call, on this, in this circle. Just tell your heart, reach out, breathe and relax, and you're going to feel what happens. Right? Hearts seek hearts. We make up, there's gigantic amounts of stories and songs and <laughs> about heart seeking hearts. Hearts seek hearts. Because the essence of the heart's energy is oneness. There you go. Now we've created the space for healing. Within this space, I want to tell you a story. There are people on this call who are part of the spiritual path that I belong to. Some of the rest of you know I belong to a spiritual path that's called the Santo Daimi. Santa Daimi Center of the at least our branch is in the center of the Amazon rainforest. I'm going to tell you a little story about one of the people who's the leader of it. Right? The leadership of this little branch is based in one family. And the oldest son is a man named Valdech. People in the Amazon region actually have very strange names, even by Brazilian standards. Valdech. So 
we call him padrinho. Padrinho means godfather. So the leaders in the in the daimi, some leaders are called padrinhos and madrinhas, godfathers and godmothers. They are not gurus. They are not, in most cases, authoritarian leaders. We are people who are doing our work in front of everybody and doing what we can to be an example of what it looks like to walk a path. But the Valdech is now 76 years old, I think. 20 years ago, he was milking a cow. And the cow fell against the side of the stall and crushed his left arm, broke, broke both our bones in, the, in the, his forearm in half. Now, where he lives is minimum eight hours from a hospital, four hours from a town where he could get a taxi and go. So he heard in the distance a canoe, a, a motorboat. And he sent someone to fetch the driver so he could get on the boat and start this long, long journey. Turned out that the boat, the boat driver was new. And so he was puttering along very, very slowly with his arm broken in half. And somebody sang a song to him. In the daimi world, the teachings are through song. We call them hymns, but they're songs that are received. They're not written. The real ones. Nobody sits down and, and writes it. It comes. So somebody sang him, and the main the main point of the song hymn was, I only transform and make use of people who are linked to me, mean, meaning the divinity that was speaking to him was saying, I only transform and make use of those who are linked up with me already. What's the point of my telling you this? What if all the misery you've been through and all the difficulties you've been through and all the energies you've picked up that you didn't know what to do with and even your, your mental difficulties and your life difficulties, what if all of that is because you naturally have so much light that you are being trained through the through the process of being a, an incarnate human to be a conscious transmitter of that exact light? What if that's the reason for your misery? And not because you did something wrong or because you didn't do something or did do something or because you have a terrible past life or any of that. What if it's exactly because you have so much natural light in you and such an, an inherent link up with divinity that those divine beings who represent that are transforming and making use of you so you can come here and learn how to consciously be a transmitter of light. It's a bit of a reframe, right? Maybe you already knew what I just said, but for me, it was a powerful every time that we sing this song, this hymn, I'm reminded of that. And so what it does is it gives me hope and it gives me strength to go through what I need to go through, which in some cases is very difficult, right? We all would like it to be, and it happens, it happens. In a difficult moment and people are, you know, be like, the Virgin Mary came and she put her arms around me and she kissed me on my forehead and I have never had a problem again. Okay, good for them. That's not usually how it is. And even after those moments of epiphany, right, that are the equivalent of being taken to the top of the mountain, most of the time we're taken to the top of the mountain, shown what it can be, how we can be in our healed and transformed ongoing state. And then we're put back down at the bottom of the mountain and told, now climb. Because the purpose that I understand of incarnation 
And of the trials that we go through, there's, there's more complicated than we can talk about tonight. But the fundamental purpose is for us to learn everything there is to learn about being an incarnate human, transfer it into the space of love and compassion and faith, take the lessons that come from that interaction of our uh, of the trials and the glories and being a human, what comes from that, the interaction of that with that space of the heart, learn from that, and then take that with us and leave the rest behind. As far as I can tell. So for me, it gives me a context, right? And what it does when we have this alignment and this relationship to uh, light is that when the moment comes, when we are challenged seriously, and almost every, all of us will be or have been, you know, we have uh, some momentum. We have some momentum. There are many examples of it. And my first real job that I ever did, first real, real job, was I worked in an alcoholic detox in Boston. Boston is the uh, kingdom of alcoholism on earth. I'm sure there are other places. Boston is... So I work with street drunks. The, the cops would bring these guys in, almost all men, a uh, couple, couple women, bring them off the street where they've been lying in a doorway. And one of the things we encouraged them to do, and we had to do it as the, the crew, we had to go to AA meetings. So here's what I learned. The time to pray... The time to get ready for when the craving comes is not when the craving's there, it's before. So that you hopefully can get through the moment when psychologically, mentally, spiritually, energetically, everything is crashing on you and yelling at you that you have to go and re-up your, your addiction. You got to have some momentum. Right, so the time to go, for instance, the time to go to a meeting is not when not when you want to drink; it's when you don't, so that you can build some momentum. In the same way, right? When I was on April twenty seventh, when I was lying on a bed in Brazil, having had a heart attack, everything that I've ever done that I'm teaching you came into play at that moment. At the same time as I was having a heart attack and I was in pain, I wasn't, I wasn't in uh, overwhelming pain, but I was in a lot of pain. At the same time, I knew that I had to release all the emotional material that I was carrying, because if I had any chance of staying alive for a little while, I had to let go of everything that I was carrying. At the same time, I'm aware my my wife has her hand behind me. My son's praying for me. Our friend Mona is holding the space. And I'm lying there. And everything that I've ever done in this realm of healing came into focus at that place. I, could, I was inside myself on some level, although I was in a lot of pain and I understood what was going on. I was calm. Because I've worked for years to be calm. But I'm not a very calm person, truthfully. And I let myself go and I was sobbing and crying and crying and crying and crying because it wasn't coming from a place of fear. It was coming from the knowledge that if I had a chance to survive, what I was carrying in my body, I had to let go of. If I had any chance for my heart to, to survive what was going on, right? And two days later, when I'm lying on a, on a, a gurney uh, having an hour and a half operation that usually takes 20 minutes. I, everything that I knew, I was praying, I was calm, I was sending light to the guy's hands, <laughs> sending light to me, feeling all the light, thousands of people praying for me, 
There's hundreds of people anyway, praying for me, calling all that light to me at the same time as in my bones, I have a shaking, like a cold, cold, cold shaking that was my biological fear of death at the same time. So everything I knew to do that I had built up some momentum, right? And I am not contrasting myself with anybody. What I'm just telling you is that's my personal experience. So the daily working with the knowledge that I'm being transformed and utilized exactly because I'm committed to light. So the transformation that I'm going, and I'm going through a very deep thing, and I know a bunch of you all are too, because I know some of you, right? Is the necessary clearing. If I'm going to be a vessel for light for real, I said today, I told my wife, I have to take a chisel and a hammer to the walls of the, my cave, my internal cave. And I have to clean every bit of lichen because that cave is getting ready to be filled with light. More light at the same time as there's lots of light coming. I'm just sharing you what I'm going through. I hope, I hope for you all, you're like, wow, I don't have to go through that. That's good. <laughs> good for you. <laughs> but I know, I know why, right? You go through what you go through also because of the prayer you made. Even if your prayer was like, shit, I need, something needs to change in my life. Many people make that, that prayer, right? Something needs to change. I don't know how to change it. It's a very, very, very common prayer. Your life changes. And it changes in ways that you don't expect. And sometimes, and oftentimes, it changes in ways that really throw you for a loop. Right? Health things, relationship things, work things, life circumstances. I live in the West. A bunch of people live in the West. Fires, right? Floods. We're in a moment on Earth, right? When the, the systems are seeking equilibrium. So I need a space in me where I can be calm and navigate that internally and externally. Otherwise, I get thrown around and get buffeted. I get buffeted. I get buffeted internally by my own emotional tides. I get buffeted by my belief systems, which in some cases are collapsing, but certainly, excuse me, morphing. And I get buffeted by the waves of ecological, political, social, cultural, religious, spiritual transformation that's going on on Earth. Right? Where does that leave us? For me, it leaves me with the simple daily relationship with light. It's so simple. Put it on the altar of faith and call light to it. And the places in your body that are activated or deprived of energy or twisted or in pain or even just activated in some other way Learn the art of calling light, real light, authentic light, not metaphorical light, not imaginary light. Through that, through your breath and through your awareness. You know, and then assuming it works for you, it works for me. I, and I, I know there are people in the bunch of people in this call. I know it works for you because we've done it together. Then teach that to other people. Teach other people, right? There are people on this on this call who are therapists and healers and and workers of, with light. Many people, right? What's the basis of what you do? For me, the basis of what I do is I call light and I help people learn how to do it for themselves and reframe what's going on. Like I said. You're being transformed and utilized because you are linked up to the divine.
that's pretty much what I wanted to say tonight. You know, transformation is real. And transformation, look, I'll tell you, I'll say one more thing. There are different ways to approach your healing, right? There are different ways to approach one's healing. Many people, many people, most people mitigate it. You try to calm it down. You try to find the right medicine. I am me too. You try to find the right medicine. You're trying to find who's going to fix it. There's a difference between fixing it and transforming it. If it can be fixed, awesome. There are things that can be fixed, right? Break your arm, put a cast on. After six weeks, it should be good. But real transformation that has to do with the issues that arise that can manifest as illness, that can manifest as these challenges. From the other way, right? The, I forgot about denial. There, there's denial. I'm just going to keep working, working. It's what I did for years. I'm going to keep working, 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 doing this amazing, great work for everybody else. And boom. That's another way. There's also the way to look and say, okay, these are the cards. This is my hand. How am I going to play it? I'm going to accept the depth of my own being, right? Which, which is always what the transformation is calling us to to deeper layers of our own self to be accessed through compassion and faith and patience and grounding and a relationship with light. We are being called to, to realize and accept and appreciate aspects of ourselves that we've ignored because they've been covered with past pain, with overwork, with whatever, with addictions, with all the things that humans do to, to try to imagine that we're getting by. But they're we're being called to the beauty of who we are and the, 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 the way in, the way in is through the heart and, and through higher will to say, yep, shit. This is not, I, I, I don't think I, I don't think I asked for this. I asked for the transformation. I asked for my, my prayer to be answered. I didn't ask for this, whatever this is. You know, I don't remember saying, oh, oh, God, give me a heart attack. I don't remember that. Well, how do you take it on? I take it on as a, a challenge and an opportunity Right, that's going to put me literally on my knees sometimes, begging for insight, begging for comfort. And because I have a link up with light, the comfort comes. I've literally, in my moments of despair, had a voice of my guide that comes and says, call light to it. And I was like, duh. How many times have I taught that? A thousand? Call light to it. So that's what I do. I can tell you at this moment, I'm, I'm, uh, uh, it's working. If you had asked me a couple of weeks ago, I might have said something different. But at this point, I can tell you that. I can tell you that light is real. Compassion is the way in. Faith is the way forward. So here's what we're going to do now, dear ones. We are going to create a collective altar of faith. Okay, we're going to collect a collective altar of faith by joining our hearts 
and then we're, each of us are going to step into the to the place of faith and by definition our hearts are going to join together and form a collective uh, space of faith and then i'm going to invite you to put on that altar of faith whatever you need to put on it particularly things that you're up against that are a dilemma you know what I mean? You know, that thing where you're like, I know what needs to happen and I have no idea how to do it based on circumstance, based on me, based on my particularly, but anything you want, right? And then we're going to call, collectively call light to it and to us. The amazing thing is because light is ubiquitous and light is uh, everything comes from the everything, comes from the heart of the divine. It can adapt itself infinitely to your particular needs. So it's both generic and specific. Okay, so that's the invitation. Let's do that together. Let's go back to the beginning, grounded on earth, centered in your heart, receiving light. Right? The three groundings we call it. Grounded on earth, center in the heart, receiving light. Breathe, relax. Breathe into your heart. There you go. Let's allow the space of compassion to form. Let's give it a minute here. Step forward into that very beautiful space of compassion. Like that. Now, step forward again into the space of faith. If you need to put your hands there, put your hands there. Don't bypass your heart, though. Go from your heart, from the center of your chest. Go forward. Going through your aura, through your vehicle, out to the space of faith. You're getting there. We're getting there. A little more. We're invoking the space of faith. It's a little trickier to get to. There you go. Now, see, feel, sense. In the center, we are all in a circle here. Not only a circle on, on Zoom, but we are a circle in many places of the world right now. In the center of our circle, there is a platform, a place of faith. Created and linked to each of our hearts. Space of faith. Now, put on that altar, on your altar and the collective altar, that which needs light. Like that, my dear ones. There you go. Now I'm going to say the little prayer I say, and we're just we're going to call light to this. Your job is breathe, pay attention as much as you can, and just receive. 
all the work that you've done has led you to this moment. Nothing more to do. We call here on the guides of this beloved, these beloved ones. We call on the guides of this work that many of us share. We ask that, that our prayers for transformation of this material be heard, registered, and answered in ways that we can feel and know as such. We ask that any energies, entities, patterns, thoughts, beliefs that no longer help are no longer necessary and that block the reception of light be taken from us gently but clearly and replaced with the vibration of light and with the knowledge of our own goodness. And we ask as always that what we do here be of some good use to all beings in the sacred path of unity, harmony, transformation, illumination, and liberation. Amen. So just breathe and relax. Here, and here we go. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Pay attention to that channel behind your head as much as you can, just by putting your awareness there, bringing your breath up. Open yourself as much as you know how right now and then a little more to light coming to you. Now breathe in your heart, renew the space of compassion. Like that, renew the space of faith. 
Hmm. And as the light comes to you, if there are thoughts that are passing through, let them pass. They're just energies that are being released. You may also feel in your body some movement, some activation of energy that you have been carrying that is not yours. Breathe, stay centered. Stay in the three groundings and allow that those energies that are not yours to be dissolved in light. In some cases, to go up your chimney where the light is coming down. Breathe in your heart, feel the vibration in your heart and that's coming to your heart right now. Breathe in your heart, feel the ground. There you go. Now, if there is an ongoing prayer 
assuming that your connection with light has been enhanced somewhat in these moments, if there is an ongoing prayer for your transformation, something that is blooming in you that you want to affirm and call light as the sunlight and the water for that blooming inside yourself, make that prayer clear. Now we're going to turn up the volume a little bit of the light because we're ready to receive a little more now. much as you can, breathe, let the light fill you. Let it fill those places where you have pain, where you have constrictions. And just let it fill you, fill your aura, fill your vehicle. Your vehicle is a jar. The light is pouring down and filling up that jar. Gathering whatever is necessary, unnecessary energies, thoughts, beliefs, misconceptions, confusions, gathering it and taking it back up the channel, up the neck of the jar.
Light of the universal Christ upon each of you. May you recognize it with your heart. May you recognize it with your soul. May you recognize it as your friend, as your companion. May you know that there is one thing at least in this universe that only wants what is good for you. Is utterly dedicated to your good self. In receiving it, May you know that you deserve it, not because of what you've done, but simply because of who and what you are. Not because of your beliefs, not because of the words you speak or the thoughts you think, but because you are a beloved child of divine light. May you know that there is nothing to prove, only to receive. May you have the courage to receive and to follow what your true, grounded, discerned intuition calls you to do in relation to what you have received. May you come to identify with this light primarily in the first place and your other identities be secondary. May all who come in contact with you feel the emanation of this light, whether they can name it or not.
May your heart be cleaned of all that covers it. May your mind be calm, focused. May all your bodies reverberate with this light. May all beings benefit from your dedication to this light, to your own goodness, and to the good of all. Amen. It is my encouragement to practice these tactics every day until they become available to you with one thought and one breath. Like anything that you wish to do, it takes practice, it takes attention. And in doing this simple work, you will come up against, so to speak, you will see, you will activate that which needs to be transformed in order to firm it. It's very, very simple. It gives you a, a referent, it gives you a refuge, and gives you the power of co-creation with your own healing process. Makes you available to your guides, to your higher self, makes you able to navigate through what can be rough waters. To make a request of you all, if you don't mind, before we, before we end. At the uh, end of October, through the first 10 days of November, I'm going to be going to Brazil to do a healing program for myself. It's necessary, powerful, can only be done there, can't be done anywhere else. So if you, in your prayers, if you would keep me and my daughter Zara, who's also going, send us some light and good wishes. I'll be appreciated very much. It's going to be the, I think, seems like the culmination of these months. Many, not even these months, these years, these 73 years of <laughs> walking the walk. So I appreciate that very much. And then we will get back together in December. I'm actually thinking of doing this on the solstice in December. You know, might as well, right? Might as well marshal all, all of our forces, our life, our light forces. Huh? So thank you all. Thank you all. Bless us all. It's an honor, an honor, an honor to be of some use to you. Amen.